Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News, the often imitated but never replicated syntax news program. I'm your host, Colin Jason Ivy Matthew Gold Glass, and this is for the week ending October 29th, 2022. As usual, we have a plethora of headlines to syntax and to talk about, as well as some memes of the week to tickle your funny bone, and our favorite uh, cognitive conjecture guest, Russell J. Gould, makes yet another appearance with some uh, pretty entertaining and interesting things to say. So that comes at the end, you'll want to stick around for that. So how about we get started? Our first headline comes from NPR, and it's from the obituary section. Jules Bass, co-creator of TV's Rudolph and Frosty the Snowman, dies at age 87. Now that's sad news for perhaps anyone from my generation who grew up with the Rankin Bass uh, animation programs that were so prevalent back then. They did all of the uh, Christmas shows, I'm pretty sure. They also did a pretty good rendition of uh, The Return of the King and The Hobbit. So that's sad news. Jules Bass being, I suppose, the part, the partner of uh, Rankin, which I can't remember the first name, but condolences goes out to uh, condolences go out to the Bass family. Syntax-wise, uh, we have. Uh, adjective pronoun and then a comma which is a break in the continuance of the evidence and then a standalone pronoun followed by an adverb modifying tv into a verb and then we have those dollar store quotations otherwise known as apostrophes surrounding rudolph and then we have a standalone non-tangible contract and which in most circumstances would function as a conjunction but in this one is a standalone pronoun because it's surrounded by excessive spacing i.e. breaks in the continuance of the evidence because then we have some more of those dollar store quotations surrounding Frosty the Snowman and those things by the way ladies and gentlemen fall under the four corner rule meaning they're not on this page so we don't need to syntax them and then we have a pronoun adverb adjective pronoun scenario at the end there Next headline comes from the Associated Press. It says, Facebook's parent is fined nearly 25M for violating a campaign finance disclosure law. Oh, just like in every other Now Space News, if you're new here, I'll just explain that the yellow markings you see uh, on the screen, it denotes particles of negation i.e. prefixes or suffixes or words that negate the now space or are no contract. And the way we credential that is we parse them, which of course is one of the three parts of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. And the way you would do that is you would look up the particles in an etymology dictionary, go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word, and find out. Does it negate the now space, i.e., is it past tense, is it future tense? Does it mean no? Is it, does it promote a negative condition of state? And if it does, then it's what we call a particle of negation. And those are in yellow. So we have uh, Facebook as an adjective, parent is an adjective, is is an adjective, find is a pronoun in the past tense, and uh, you can check that out in the syntax key at the top of your screen here in the starboard side, followed by adverb nearly, because the L-Y is a poison suffix. It's so poisonous that it kills the tangibility of the word it's attached to. And then we have the verb 25M. And then we have adverb 4, violating is a verb. And the I-N-G, of course, is a particle of negation because it is a gerund modifier. A is a non-tangible adverb, which is modifying campaign into an adjective, which is coloring finance into an adjective. Disclosure is an adjective, and law is a pronoun. Dis, of course, means no. And I apologize for any except outside noise you may hear. It just happens to be one of my 
home companions. My little kitten Snowby is playing with his ball. So a Washington State judge on Wednesday fined Facebook parent company Meta nearly $25 million for repeatedly and intentionally violating campaign finance disclosure law. These big companies, if you follow the Securities and, and Exchange Commission, like me, I subscribe to their email so I get notified every time there's a new case or a judgment or anything. Big companies like Meta, Meta is not the only one. They just continuously are paying out millions and millions and millions of dollars in fines and fees for violating rules. They do it continuously. They don't care. Matter of fact, I'm pretty pretty sure they they allow for that in their yearly budget, you know, to pay off the fines for all the rules that they know they're violating. Next headline comes from the week. Who's right? Biden says Dems want me to run. 64% say they don't. Well, that's pretty funny. So we have adverb verb, then we have adjective adjective pronoun, and then we have those dollar store quotations there, which are not on the page, falls under the four corner rule. Then we start off with an adjective, an adjective, a pronoun. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb, as in this case, adverb they, which is modifying don't into a dangling participle verb. Now, that, that's just funny to me. I mean, also, you know, they say that 80% of the citizens of the country voted for that guy. Which, I mean, I guess if you believe that, you'll believe anything, right? Next headline comes from ABC News. Elon Musk closes deal to acquire Twitter. Reports. He agreed to the original offer price of 54 dollars and 20 cents per share or about 44 billion adjective adjective pronoun adverb in the future tense adjective pronoun and then the uh, colon there functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence and then reports as a standalone pronoun we have adverb adjective pronoun in the future tense adverb adjective adjective pronoun adverb adjective adjective pronoun conjunction adverb adjective Pronoun. And what's going on with that conjunction there is it is a bridge between those two syntax scenarios, the 134 and 134. So it's a neutral bridge between two conditions of state 134, 134. Next headline comes from ABC News again. Former Philadelphia deputy accused of trafficking guns used in deadly school shooting. The guns were allegedly sold two weeks after a Philadelphia school shooting. We have adjective, 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 pronoun in the past tense with accused. And then we have adverb, adjective, adjective, adjective in the past tense, pronoun. Then we have deadly as an adverb, school is adjective, shooting is a pronoun. And then the guns were allegedly, we have... Adverb, adjective, pronoun, past tense, adjective, I'm sorry, adverb in allegedly with the poison prefix ly as long as well as the particle of negation vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word, which is modifying sold into a tangible contract adjective in the past tense, which is coloring to the number two, TW, well, it's actually the word to, into tangible contract adjective, and then that's coloring weeks, tangible contract adjective. And then we have after as a pronoun, followed by adverb. And then Philadelphia, of course, is adjective, school adjective, and shooting is a pronoun. Next headline comes from USA Today. Is John Fetterman fit for office? Wow. That's some alliteration there, right? Fetterman fit for. That's three Fs in a row. His health challenges shouldn't be off limits. And then we have a paragraph in uh, or a sentence in uh, italics which also falls under the four corner rule honest conversations about our political candidates strengths and weaknesses is one of the things that make america that makes america great ladies and gentlemen these journalists or whatever you want to call them tim swearens from usa today they're supposed to have gone to school or to college perhaps right we can reasonably guess that to study english plain english and learn how to write 
correctly. Is that is that a fair thing to, to guess? That sentence, that fiction sentence, which, by the way, the reason it's not syntax is because it falls under the four-corner rule the italics do. But I digress. Honest conversations about our political candidate's strengths and weaknesses is. Why is the verb is being used, Tim? Conversations would be the subject of the sentence in a fiction sense. Conversations is plural. So is is the not the word you would choose there. It would be honest conversations about our political candidates' strengths and weaknesses are one of the things that make America great. Tim, if you want to contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, I can not only educate you on correct sentence structure, but I can also give you some pointers on your uh, fiction babble there. So we have adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, 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 pronoun. Off limits is a compound pronoun. So I know what they're talking about here, uh, John Fetterman. I remember hearing part of that debate between he and I think it was Dr. Oz, that television actor personality, Dr. Oz. And uh, they asked Fetterman, they said, in an interview in, you know, a few years ago, you said you were totally against fracking, that it was wrong and you're against, you oppose fracking. But now you're saying you're for fracking. How do you justify or, you know, justify those two different opposing, directly opposing points of view? And he couldn't answer the question. He couldn't even try to finagle around it. He just said, I support fracking. Like he wouldn't explain it. They said, we know you support fracking now, but back then, a couple of years ago, you said that you were opposed to fracking, that you didn't, you, you, you opposed it, you didn't want it. So why, what's the deal with the switch? And then he just kept saying, I, I support fracking. It was goofy. So I guess he had a stroke. So I think they're attributing his lack of cognitive, uh, his lack of cognitive function to that stroke and this is a a real question here because i mean look at uh i could say look at who is in office right now and i mean do they complete coherent sentences do they make sense um i guess that's not a prerequisite anymore you don't even not even for writing for newspapers, for a great, you know, one of the largest newspapers in the world, USA Today, you don't even have to know how to write correct, uh, plain, simple English for that. So it's uh, gone downhill. Another headline from USA Today, andropause. Some call it menopause for men. It's controversial and complicated, experts say. So we have those dollar store quotations in andropause. We don't need to syntax that. And then we have adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, conjunction, verb in the past tense, a break in the continuance of the evidence with the comma, and an adjective pronoun. I have to guess, I can reasonably guess, that this is coming from some far left uh, democratic uh, party and uh, it's just they come up with some pretty amazing and quite frankly ridiculous uh, scenarios and concepts like this it's just just when you think that they can't get any more ridiculous boom <laughs> they get way more ridiculous next headline what will matter more to women voters in midterms, abortion rights or the price of bread? Let's not forget, high inflation is temporary. As American voters, it is our charge to play the long game. So we have adverb, adjective, in the future tense, adjective, pronoun, adverb, in the future tense, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, conjunction, adverb, verb, adverb, dangling, participle, verb. And then we don't syntax the italics. It falls under the four-corner rule. Uh, high inflation is temporary. Is it really? 
What is temporary then? Two years? Three years? A decade? Seriously. Um, as American voters, it is our charge to play the long game. I've always kind of looked at it this way. Uh, it kind of turns out that the American public, their relationship with the government is sort of like a, an abusive relationship uh, between two partners, where one partner is abusive and the other one is the victim. As long as you keep participating with it, then the abuse continues. Um, if you choose to not participate with it, then the abuse stops. So that's kind of like the same thing with this. It's like, when did the term voting for the lesser of two evils come to the forefront? I don't remember when that was, but, you know, how's voting for evil been working out for you? <laughs> now we have our on-the-spot syntax lesson from Daily Mail. Shell's profits soar to $82 billion in just three months, more than double the amount for the same period last year. So let's check out some of those particles of negation in here. We'll just do this section up here. Let's see. I see PRO, TOs, future tense, found in front of a consonant there. Found in front of a consonant. Now let's move into the syntax. Starting from the end, working backwards, which is the most efficient, effective, and accurate way to syntax that I know. We ask ourselves, is the word tangible or is it non-tangible? Well, here is tangible. Is last tangible? How do you know if it's tangible? Well, let's look it up and find out. The earliest nativity root meaning of last would come from this word, which means furrow track, and that is tangible contract. So last is tangible contract, period is tangible contract. How about same? Is same tangible contract? It's one of those ones where you would think it's non-tangible, but are you sure about that? Let's find out. So we hear pro, pi root, same. Form of root sem one together with so that's definitely tangible contract. So now we have enough information to syntax. Here is a pronoun, last adjective, period is adjective, same as adjective, the is an adverb, non tangible contract. For is non-tangible, I'm sorry, yeah, for, F-O-R, non-tangible contract pronoun, being colored by tangible contract amount, which is an adjective. Again, the is non-tangible contract adverb. Double would be a verb. Tangible contract than is non-tangible contract adverb. More would be a pronoun. And then we have months pronoun three, um, is uh, adjective and just. Now, the way it's used here, it would appear to be non-tangible. But is it? Let's find out. So just 1,400 precisely, exactly. It's 1,400. Anything earlier than 1,400? Fourteen hundred as as early as we get here, and that's precisely exactly. So that sounds like tangible contract to me. So we'll put that as an adjective. In is an adverb. Eighty-two billion would be a verb. Two is an adverb in the future tense. Soar is a pronoun. Profits adjective in shell is an adjective. If you'd like uh, more knowledge about how to syntax, you can check out the, geez, there's got to be at least 60, 70 videos on my syntax playlist on, on this YouTube channel. So feel free to study that. Next up, we have meme of the week. I have a couple memes to tickle your funny bone. I thought this one was, uh, was really funny in light of, uh, 
all of the interesting things that have been going on out that way. This one in particular with regards to PayPal, if you know, you know. And this is the reason that I got rid of pay PayPal. I deleted, I deleted my PayPal account because of this. And the last one is, uh, well, and the last one with uh, talking about animals, the beautiful animal known as the elephant in the room. Just a positive message, that's all. So for the cognitive conjecture this week, I've already done a reaction to part of this video, which at the time I didn't know, or it wasn't on YouTube at the time, so I thought it was something that was just private, that was being promoted on a Telegram channel. But as you can see, it is now available on YouTube. Uh, that's why, you know, it's great to have these students who send me stuff before it's made public. But this one, I'm going to address a couple things that uh, this guy says. And I have, to, I have to say this. I have a friend of mine that made the comment that he started calling Russell J. Gould Lil Russ. L-I-L Russ. Because he's wearing a bandana and apparently has taken on the garb and attire of a rapper. <laughs> so this is a, a video starring Lil Russ. You are your best ally. Love yourselves. Love your, trust yourself. Earlier, Winifred was talking about our organs got to trust everything. Trust with every fiber in your body that you're correct. Trust with every Words of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. There is no cognitive conjecture in what he just said. I trust in myself implicitly that I am correct. I will take the Pepsi challenge with anyone. I'll take the Pepsi challenge with Lil Russ with my grammar. Uh, look at the description of this video that you're watching right now and look at the grammar and then compare it to, say, the grammar uh, right here in the title of the video. I mean... I agree, Lil Russ. I agree. Every fiber in your body that you love your fellow mankind, that you want to communicate, you want to, and the world is learning about communication. A lot of people trying to steal this technology. I don't have to tell any of you. Most of you see them online. All of you see all the influencers. Stay away from me. Okay, so what he's talking about there, he, he goes from, he juxtaposes talking about love yourself, love your neighbor, and then he talks about Thieves who are stealing from him. I can't speak for anyone else, but for myself, I'm aware that my name is on his website under the, I don't know, like void authorization list or whatever he talks about. I use correct grammar. So therefore, there's no worries there. And as he mentioned earlier, I am 100% uh, confident that I'm correct with this grammar. And there's over 400 videos on this channel to prove the grammar. I'm not talking about anything else except for the most important thing in this whole deal. The foundation of everything that he's talking about that I'm talking about. The grammar. I don't care about war stories about what someone said they did or didn't do or bragging about, you know, Raise your hand if you're the chief judge of the Supreme Court. Raise your hand if, if you've walked into the Hague. I don't care about any of that. I'm talking about the grammar. It's the most important thing. And if you don't know the grammar, then you're not correct. That's the bottom line. Bottom line. Loved ones would be safe. There's not one general, and I don't give a damn how many generals listen to this. Where's your huevos? Oh, yeah, you're going to lose your paycheck. You're worried about the money. So he just called out military generals, asked them where their balls were. This coming from a guy who has never served a day of military service in his life, who's never went through boot camp. So, like, for example, 
myself as a grammar tutor, I can criticize other people's grammar because I know I use the grammar, been studying it, got over 20,000 hours in it. I use it, been 100% successful with it. I can use it lickety split on the spot. I'm very confident with it that I'm correct. So therefore, I'm in a position to critique and audit other people who claim to use the grammar. I can do that. I can stop trespass with this grammar. I'm not in the military. So I'm not going to go and criticize a general in the military because I've never walked in his shoes. I've never gone to war in a foreign land. I don't know anything about that other than what I read. So for someone like that to go in and disrespect the United States military like that is, it's incredible, really. I think it's, in my own personal opinion, I think it's wrong. I really do. But that's just my opinion. That has nothing to do with the grammar. That just has to do with, uh, you know, the balance of the honor and grace and uh, performance of how a man acts and the position that they have and the authority they have to criticize anybody. Authority comes from knowledge. I have knowledge of the grammar, therefore I have an authority of the grammar. I don't have knowledge of the military. I've never done it. I've never been in their shoes. Therefore, I don't have any authority to say shit about military. But you see what I'm getting at? I've been trained. I've been trained by the finest judges that you guys all elected and put in position. The U.S. federal judicial system and uh, the World Court at The Hague and the different cases that I've been involved with around the world. Those judges took time. How many of you have had judges come off the bench and sit across the table and take off their robe? I've had it 122 times in a row. Okay. So there's a lot to unpack in that little bit right there. He just did, the, like, he claims to be a humble individual, but there he is speaking down in a derisive manner to his audience. How many of you have had judges come down off the bench and speak with you? Of course no one has. Of course no one has. And... The point I wanted to, the main thing I wanted to point out, ladies and gentlemen, is this man just admitted that he has been trained by the best judges on earth. What kind of judges? Fiction judges who belong to the bar, who are trained in the sorcery of the fiction. This man has been trained by the best of them. So no wonder he's doing what he's doing and having the effect that he's having. No wonder. He's been trained to do it. He just admitted it. And that's really all there is to say about that. Well, that wraps it up for this edition, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Um... It's with a heavy heart that, that I must send out into the cosmos a message of love to my daughter, colon, Bethany hyphen Marie, colon space, Makoviak hyphen glass, period, who passed away in my arms 29 years ago on this day. Well, it wasn't on this day. It was on, I'm recording this on the 28th to be published on the 29th, but she passed away 29 years ago on the 28th of October. I just want her and, and the cosmos to know that uh, I love her and I miss her wherever she is. And, and someday I hope to see her again. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you're interested in, if you're interested in learning correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and uh, you can ask me whatever you want. I'll do the same with you and we'll find out if this is exactly what you want to do. If not, you can study the over 400 videos on this YouTube channel or become a member. There are two tiers. You can hit the join button on my main page or underneath this video and find out what that's all about. 
Every week I publish exclusive content for members, not available to the general public, having to do with correct sentence structure and how you actually use it in a real now space scenario. Thank you again, and I'll see you all next week.